giving the message of William Brenham is a tough journey that has consequences that are positive and negative. The positive consequences are that you experience the joy and that overwhelming peace. The negative consequences are that your friends that were so dear to you will turn against you. You'll be labeled as a label, as a disobedient person, as a sinner, or a person who has turned against God. With this view, I would like to highlight the reasons why I left the message of William Brenham. I left the message of William Brenham due to the following reasons. Number one, extra biblical teachings. Extra biblical teachings are teachings that are not in the Bible. Teachings that are outside the Bible. Teachings that are against the Bible. For example, William Branham taught that a man has a right to divorce a woman who cuts her hair. When we compare this statement to what Paul taught, we find that it is contrary to the teaching of Paul. Paul just said, a woman that cuts her hair is one as her head, and her head is the man. Number two, failed prophecies. I'll give an example of a failed prophecy of William Branham, which is the South African prophecy. In 1951, William Branham had successful meetings in South Africa in Debre. And he went back to the US. In the following year, 1952, William Brenham claimed to have had received a vision of going back to South Africa where he would have a meeting consisting of 300,000 people and he testified this before the church. William Brenham was expectant that this vision would be fulfilled one day. During the course of time he had to mistake this vision of going to South Africa with the idea that he was supposed to go to India first. When he went to India he did not have successful meetings there and William Branham himself confirmed that he had an unsuccessful campaign in India. He publicly told the church that, as you all know, that the Indian trip was not a success the way it was supposed to be, because he did not obey the Holy Spirit. So his attention was shifted to go to South Africa, where his vision was supposed to be fulfilled. In 1965, William Brenham applied for a visa to go to South Africa. However, his visa was restricted by the South African government. William Brenham could not treat. What we can see is that the vision that he said was the thus said the Lord did not come to pass as he confirmed himself William Branham stated that if I speak anything by that said the Lord and it fails to come to pass, then you should write on my back that I am a person. This is confirmed in this message. Number three, wrong teachings. In the message, William Branham is viewed as 
the seventh angel recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 7, which reads, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he declared unto his servants the prophets. This teaching that William Granham was this seventh angel to finish the mystery of God is based on exhorting William Branham to be the last angel of the last church age. However, the Bible teaches clearly that this seventh angel is one of the seven angels recorded in the book of Revelation chapter 8 verse 2. The angels were given seven trumpets to sound. And these seven trumpets are the trumpets of judgment. And these seven angels are not yet come. The seventh angel is going to sound the trumpet after the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. After these two witnesses have done their ministerial work on earth, the seventh angel appears in verse 15 of the same chapter 11. In conclusion, I would say that the whole message of William Branham was based on falsehood and self-exhortation and also on deceptive acts of William Branham to claim that he was the last Gentile prophet to have the present truth. And my appeal to the followers of William Branham is that do a proper research, you are going to find that the message that you are holding so dear is deceptive, it is destructive. You need to be set free. For the Lord Jesus said, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And whomsoever the Son of God has set free, is free indeed. God bless you.